My God, here we are. It has been a long, long time. Welcome to the grimiest, slimiest, weakest, <laughs> dumbest, <laughs> most pathetic, infested, piece of shit podcast you have ever seen that has ever existed since the inception of morality itself and humanity itself. Since the first egg in the first woman was copulated. Since the first spark of the first electrical charge was charged. Since the first explosion back in the annals of history. I'm here with Ja boy, you know him, you love him, Lusty. Hey, what's happening? I I'm I'm impressed that you didn't botch up the annals part. Yeah, uh, annals, assholes, annals. What is it? What am I going to this? Oh the man, annals, what's the up, annals dude? of history. Oh dude. my god. So I like your new setup over here. You got like stairs behind you now. You got like uh... I, got no, I got a second story now. Yeah, upgraded. There you upgraded, go. man. Nice. You gonna get like one of those like fireman poles? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put a stripper pole. It's a tall, See? really tall ceiling, but I got room in the right in the center of the whole fucking apartment right here. Put a there big stripper go. pole. Nice. That'll be fun. Yeah. Get some lights. There you go. And you got so, a new hat uh, too. You liked my hat. Yeah, we didn't even get started on the show. We, we couldn't even hit record for a while because, uh, you know, Lusty over here was, was loving my hat so much. Um, go ahead and read it out loud, Lusty. All right. Let me get a Four loco, a boner pill, and $6 on pump two. <laughs> oh, it's fucking, it's fucking perfect, right? It's fucking perfect. That is, that is fucking great. perfect, man. All you got to do is just go. <clears throat> I don't need to say shit anymore, dude. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know. I don't go out a whole lot, but gas stations are unavoidable. But now they are. Now they are avoidable. See? There you go. Um, so, bro, it's been, it's been what feels like probably... How long do you think it's been since we've done a show? Oh, it's been a while. It's, it's, I would say, I think, May. May? May, yeah, damn. It, it's May, been something long. like that. May, June, maybe. I, That's about I it. Look. Before summer. It's been a while. Look right now, because I am, I am, I am vastly curious. Vastly curious. Those four locos and those boner pills hit me at you know at the same time, and it's just like, I just have to know. I just have to know. You know what I mean? And this is a good uh, question. Let's see here. Four months. Oh, I see. I see. Four months. Four months. But that's a long time. That is a long time. Especially in this fucking world. We used to do one every month. Uh, this one was June thirteenth. Was the last show I uploaded? Wow, about five months. Yeah. Damn. So fucking hey, man. All all the all the all of our it, divided but yet also included in each other fans are. I've been waiting. They've been waiting for the lesson leader to come back. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, dude. I so much stuff has happened. <laughs> On both of our ends, I, I'm looking. I'm like, my God! Like we've 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 went off in these different directions, but holy shit, the amount of stuff we're gonna collide. And what was that case? You started off. There was a case you were you sent me, talking about the U S corporation, but it was pre 1871. I thought, let me see if I can pull that up. Do you remember yeah, I don't which know, one? But no. Anyway, and I was looking. I said, yeah, you know, it's funny because. I found something that was really interesting, and there's a couple of things. <clears throat> um, the United States, if you look at the Constitution, and you look at the very first paragraph of the Constitution, it tells you there's two entities right there. Oh, that's right. You're t you were showing me this. Yeah. Yeah. It says, we the people of the United States create this Constitution for the United States of America. Two right different there. entities. Two different entities. Well, in the in the in the explanatory statement from James C. Levitt, there's like three or four of them, and he has all the evidence, and he has all the different court cases and everything to support. There's like three or more, actually. Um, yeah, and he, he gives them he gives them little stars in the explanatory statement, 
So every time he says United States, he, he puts a little star after it, like one star, two stars, or three stars, that to, to determine which definition that he's actually referring to throughout that document. Very um, intelligent move. It's, a, it's an amazing document, actually. Like even, even reading it again, uh, I read it probably again like maybe six or eight months ago. I had been you know, several, several months before, since I had originally read it. That document is unbelievable. Uh, absolutely shocking uh, reading it and again many months later i couldn't believe you know it's like i only understood a fraction of what that document was actually saying and then i'll probably read it again in six months and be blown away again you know what i mean oh yeah yeah there's some things like you look at it and you go oh wow okay and then you look at it again months later and you're like holy crap i see it differently again and every time it's just, it's just the, with the added on information that you got from the continuously studying, when you go back and look at the earlier information, you can see it in a new light every single time or get more out of it that you didn't get the first time. So, or get a boner pill or a four local out of it either, you know? Oh, yeah. But I'm definitely, <laughs> I, I'm looking at some of this stuff and definitely a boner pill and four loco. <laughs> I, I mean, don't need boner <laughs> pills with this shit. I got all the boner <laughs> pills right here, dude. These things are the boner pills. <laughs> uh, meaning I might do paid ads on TikTok and then just drive them from TikTok onto another platform, something like that. Maybe I might do some tests. Uh, but I'd like you to talk about TikTok because I know that you've kind of gone in that direction. I'd like to talk to you about uh, kind of what's been happening with you, what's been changing, what, what you kind of realize, what direction that you're headed. Because you and I haven't really had any... We, we had a couple private talks, but it's, it's, it's actually, I don't actually know all the answers to these questions. So go ahead and take it away there. <clears throat> Lusty. Right. So um, I had a few people uh, kind of saying, tell me I should do a TikTok. I should do TikTok. And finally I said, all right, all right, I'll download the app and take a look at it and, and make an account and see what's going on in there. And um, I, I uploaded, like, I think some of the early videos I made on Rumble and put them on there. And, um, <clears throat> you know, whatever. Nothing much was happening with that. I wasn't expecting anything to happen. But um, I made, like, a couple of videos. There was, like, somebody made some kind of comment about taxes. And I said, oh, yeah, there's a code that says you have to pay taxes. Here it is. And I, I pulled it up and I put it on TikTok. And it was 26 CFR 1.1-1, right? Says all oh, U.S. Yeah. citizens and residents have to pay taxes, and you know, uh, 871B and 877B of the uh, IRS tax code for non-resident aliens. And um, I mean, that thing freaking blew up like crazy. It was, and people were pointing out, "Hey, it says general rule." That's right, it's not law; it's a general rule. It's a rule, not a law. But it went, it blew up from there. Um, then it, you know, just more and more people started following and asking questions and then I got into the uh, driving versus traveling and um, you know first it was a lot about the taxes a lot of people asking questions about taxes and stuff like that and I had I even had cops come on there and um, they started calling me like sovereign citizen and I got a cop he was like you're a sovereign citizen I said no I never said I was like you know I, I'm not he goes well I consider you are because because you're saying the same crap that they say and I just started showing him the codes I was like, well, I'm not. I'm just telling you what Congress said. So honestly, if you're going to call me a sovereign citizen, you might as well call Congress sovereign citizens because they're the ones that are saying this. I'm just repeating what they're saying. And after a while, he looked at the different codes and he goes, okay, you know what? I think you're onto something. I'm going to retract my statement of you being a sovereign citizen. And he apologized. Damn, that's badass. That was. I think, I, I think you sent me that one. I'm looking right now at your. Uh, oh, here you are. Yeah. <clears throat> At Joe Lustica. That's your username. Yeah, very original uh, name, too. <laughs> Easy to find. Easy to find. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, so that was cool. But then, after a while, I started getting these bar attorneys commenting on, on there. And th here's, the, here's the thing. So I talk about a few different things. I'll talk about the taxes. I'll talk about nationality stuff, citizenship stuff, uh, driving versus traveling um, and maybe some stuff about IRS tax forms and things like that or other kinds of random things. But what these bar attorneys do is they go, they only, they only talk up on the driving versus traveling videos. They don't talk uh, on any of the other ones? No, not, not, no, no way, not at all. And I find it very interesting. They only attack 
the driving versus traveling videos. They only attack that. They won't talk about anything else, and they'll they'll disparage you. They'll call you sovereign citizen. Uh, I have had a black couple of guys because they'll go and make like videos disparaging me. And I said, I was like, hey, listen, that's libel and slander. That's defamation of character that you're doing in those videos. You know that's illegal and you shouldn't be doing that. As a lawyer, you 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 should be held to a higher standard, and not practice be yeah, you know true. doing things like libel, slander, and defamation on people. So I've had to block a couple of those guys. I hate doing that because I'd rather have a conversation with them since those are the people that, you know, you're going up against in courtroom anyway. Um, and it's really funny. They only talk about, they only go after the driving, traveling videos. They won't go after any of the, the other stuff. When you talk about IRS forms, taxes, all they'll say is you're going to go to jail. That's mm. all they'll say. But they won't, when you say how, you say if you have to pay taxes and you're going and you don't, you go to jail. Well, I'm saying that if you are, yeah, if you're obligated to pay, you're right. But if you don't have an obligation to pay, then what's the issue? That's what people don't get. I mean, even, even within our own, within our own group, it's like you, you, the, the, the revocation of election, the election is to be treated as a resident alien for purposes of determining your tax liability. So it's like, you're, you're basically saying, Yes, give me a tax liability. So think about it. When you take that election away, there's no tax liability. That's the right. part that's so funny. You look up the definition of taxpayer from 26 uh, USC 7701 subsection 14, and it says any, uh, any person who is subject to any internal revenue tax. Right. So if you, if you don't have an election to, to, to be treated as though you live in the District of Columbia for the purposes of determining your income tax liability and you're a non-resident alien and it says non-resident aliens don't have a tax liability, then by definition you aren't a taxpayer. So what's the problem? Like you're, you're not saying I'm not paying taxes. You're just simply not a taxpayer. Like you can, you can tell people that <clears throat> it's basically the same as if you lived in you know, a different country or something like that. I don't know. Right. Well, I think that even when you do the revocation of election, they consider you a taxpayer but only on those two parts of the code, right? So they'll still refer to you as taxpayer, but they say taxpayer, but only applicable to these codes. So they kind of shuffle you into a different folder or a different designation of taxpayer. Yeah, you're a non-resident alien that has a tax liability on any income made from the direct, directly from the District of Columbia. Bingo. Right. And, and I've, I've been able to prove that because ever since I did the revocation of election, all the paperwork I get comes from Philadelphia, all of it, right? And people, people, I've done things where people have done the same thing and they'll get it from Cincinnati or they'll get it from somewhere else. Mine always comes out of Pennsylvania, out of the Philadelphia campus. So it tells me that everything was moved over there because they're the ones that take care of foreigners. Mm. But <laughs> I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something right now that's going to prove that everyone's considered a non-resident alien anyway. Everyone's automatically considered a non-resident alien. <clears throat> Go for um, it. Do it. Do a screen share if you want. All right. So um, it's it's called the SS four form. Ooh. Right. The, this is the the form that you get to get a EIN number. Right. And it's really funny because your company, like when you go work for somebody, right, they withhold taxes from you, right? So they're a withholding agent. Mm -hmm. Well, when we look on the SS4 form, which I'm going to share, I have to share the whole share screen. Share that though, right? screen, bro. Share the screen. All right. Share that screen before the fucking four locos kick in, dude. <laughs> All right, so you, you can see my screen? No, it takes a minute. Like, once it pops up, it, like, takes a minute for it to, like, fully load in. All right. There we go. There, it's going now. Okay, cool. So this is the SS4 form. This is the form people use to get EIN numbers, like uh, like a foreign grant or trust. Um, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with this form. Yeah, boy. I've sent in a lot of those. But a withholding agent has a very special purpose. And it actually tells you right on here. Tell us the secrets, Lusty. It's right here on, on part 15. If applicant 15. is a withholding agent, enter date income will first be paid to non-resident alien. If you're getting an EIN to be a withholding agent, that means you're withholding 
payments or income from the non-resident alien. Let me see that. I'm going to pull it up on my end so I can see it a little bigger. Yeah, yeah. So what do we got? Application for employer identification number. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me go box 15. If applicant is a withholding agent, enter date. Income will be paid to non-resident alien. Huh. I don't understand that part. Well, it's saying that a withholding agent withholds uh, portions of, of an income for a non-resident alien. So is that is there anywhere there's a definition that explains that in Title 26? Uh, I mean, what if we typed in uh, what is the definition of a withholding agent yeah, from let's do that. Title That's not a bad 26? Idea. Oh, wow. It comes from the same section, 26 U.S.C. 7701, the, the full title dictionary section. Subsection 16, it says here. Can I share it up? Yeah, on the, yeah share it up. Let's see. I'm yeah, curious see what it says. It says here, it's a lusty man with a lusty plan, bro. <laughs> a lusty man with a powerful pink boner pill, bro. With the Rhino 9000, bro. All right, so let's see here. We've got uh, 16A, so we're going to do 26 USC 7701. All of your favorite definitions from Title 26. All of your favorite definitions from non-positive law, which is fantastic, right? The term any withholding person? agent means any person required to deduct and withhold any tax under the provisions of section. So we're going to go through these, I guess. Uh, 26 USC 1441. USC 1441. <laughs> uh, withholding tax <laughs> on non-resident aliens. Yep, there you go. That's the first one. Well, let me just, I'm going to pull up all these together. We're going to take yeah, a look. Yeah, yeah, that's totally fine. 26 1442. USC 1442. We'll do that one next. Foreign corporations. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Interesting. That's interesting. Uh, 1443. I think the last one's 1461, I think. What is this? <clears throat> yeah, oh. I'll, I'll pull up the. Uh, the definition. Get the number. 26 USC 1443 is the next one, I think. Foreign tax exempt organizations. Damn, man. <laughs> this is getting spicy. Yeah, spicy. I'm telling you, man. Like, Spice. It's, Wait, I lost it. It's 14. They have a secret uh, presumption. 16. There's a hidden presumption that everyone's a non resident alien to begin with. It's really Let's interesting. Let's see here. 1461. Uh, 26 USC 1461, liability for withheld tax. Oh, no shit. So you're, you're, you're right. Yeah, there's no, it's all foreign. Yeah. So the first one we're going to look at is withholding of tax on non-resident aliens. Let's see, custody disposal. Deduct and withhold from such items a tax equal to 30% thereof. Mm -hmm. That's that's about what they're taking out of everyone's pay currently. That's that's what they take out. It's about 30%. That's why if you get paid like uh, like not that much, people get like these big checks back at the end of the year. Huh. Uh, an organization described in blah, which is exempt. Uh, in the case of an individual who is not a candidate for a degree at an educational organization. What? I know. It's like some of these things just seem random. I did just randomly a non immigrant stuck in there. under subparagraph F, J, or M of section. What is this? I, oh, yes. I have to show you that. That's another thing, by the way. The non immigrant alien. It's 18 U.S. Code. Uh, no, 8 U.S. Code 1101. Subsection 15. Non immigrant alien. And I'm going to. This is another thing I, I, you got to see because this is wild. <clears throat> Um, 8 USC 1101, the big boy, the definition section. Yep, that one. And it's 15. 15 is the big one that you have to scroll through. That's the one you're scrolling through. You get to 21, 22, and 23. It's, that's the one. Um, it's called a non-immigrant, is it? Non-immigrant aliens, 15. And it has all these 
Yeah, look, look at this. An ambassador. Ambas yep, yeah. Recognized du jour. Look at that. Yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, I was looking at this and I said, you know what? If you look at the ATF, the ATF will recognize the term non-immigrant alien. Okay? And they have forms for non-immigrant aliens to bring guns into the United States. ATF non immigrant. Yeah. I mean I went ATF. through a whole I went down this whole rabbit hole with that a while back. Alien. ATF if you want to do yeah, gun application. Yeah. There you go. Non immigrant aliens. They can get guns, they can import guns. Tourist students, business travelers, temporary workers. See? They're lawfully lawfully, not legally, lawfully admitted aliens who are not lawful permanent residents. Let's see here. Can a yeah, it gets a little weird in this area. It's confusing, but whatever. Yeah, they make it confusing, but there's forms that kind of unconfuse it. Um, but yeah, so this is interesting though. This is interesting. We have um, <clears throat> we have another one withholding of tax on foreign corporations. Which mm -hmm. Looks like it's a lot of the same information. Cops coming for you? Oh yeah. For the purposes of this subsection, the term foreign. Corporation does not include a corporation created or organized in these areas. Interesting. Those are the territories. Commonwealth of Puerto Rico. Applicability. Uh, okay. And then we have uh, foreign tax exempt organizations. Uh, liability for withheld tax. This is the one that every person required to deduct and withhold any tax under this chapter is hereby made liable for such tax and is hereby indemnified against the claims and demands of any person for the amount of any payments made in accordance with the provisions of this chapter made liable for such tax and is hereby indemnified against claims huh interesting Interesting. So the term withholding agent means any person required to deduct and withhold any tax under the provisions of section this one, withholding of tax on non-resident aliens. This one, withholding of tax on foreign corporations. This one, foreign tax exempt organizations. And uh, the other one, which is uh, just talking about the obligation to withhold taxes and the uh, liability to withhold taxes. Right. And you see a withholding agent, all the companies are acting as withholding agents. And withholding agents are specifically for non-resident aliens and foreign corporations. So there's like this hidden presumption or, or it's a hidden presumption that everyone is a non-resident alien or foreign corporation. And then, then, and then they operate that way. But, that's, and, but the veneer is that the presumption is that everyone's a U.S. citizen or resident. It, it's very weird how all that was put together. You are a withholding agent if you are a U.S. or foreign person that has control, receipt, custody, disposal, or payment of income of a foreign person that is subject to withholding. What the flying fuck? I'm, I'm telling you, man, it's something else. But I'm going to show you why they're formed. A withholding agent may be an individual corporation, partnership, trust, association, or any other entity, including any foreign intermediary, foreign partnership, or U.S. branch of certain foreign banks and insurance companies. It may be a withholding agent even if there is no requirement to withhold from a payment or even if another person has withheld the required amount from the payment. Although several persons may be withholding agents for a single payment, the full tax is required to be withheld only once generally. The U.S. person who pays an amount subject to NRA withholding, non-resident alien, look. Yeah, non-resident alien. Is the person responsible for withholding. However, other persons may be required to withhold, for example, a payment made by a flow-through entity or non-qualified intermediary that knows or has reason to know that the full amount of NRA withholding was done by the person. Let's see here. Withholding agent liability. This right here is why employers are so freaked out about the WABEN form. That's right. That's, that's exactly why. Determination, and that comes from that, that last one that we just read. The, that the comes 1461. From the 1461, <clears throat> yeah. 
26 USC. That's this right here. Interesting. Interesting. Let's see, where does this one go? One, two, three, right there. But here's the thing is that we can actually show them that code. I think this could be another thing and say to them, hey, listen, uh, you're no longer liable for withholding tax from us. Well, here's a better question. Um, someone do a release. So it's always in the CFR. Uh, let's see here. Choo choo, choo choo train. Liability of withholding agent acting through an agent. Uh, liability to further obtain something. Withholding satisfied by another. Payment of withheld tax. Through payments. I bet you there's, a, there's an opt-out on this, too. There's always an opt-out button everywhere. <clears throat> I bet if we dug through this, we could find something in here that says, you know, election or something, you know? Right. Now, I'll tell you something really interesting. Um, the Articles of Confederation, okay? Um, these, this was the original, like, Constitution, right, of the United States, it was it was ratified in 1781, and they say that it was replaced by the U.S. Constitution in 1789. They always say that oh it was replaced it was replaced, but never not anywhere in the Constitution does it say that the Articles of Confederation were canceled. It doesn't ever say that. It doesn't say that this will supersede this. This takes over. This replaces. And that, it doesn't say that ever. In fact, if you look at if you read the Constitution very carefully, nowhere in the Constitution does it tell you where the um, <clears throat> um, how the states are put into the union. Right? Mm -hmm. Like if so, if like a, if a piece of land and a group of people say, "Hey, we want to become a state for the United States um, and become the fifty-first state, like Puerto Rico, for example," which they don't want to do. Um, there, there's nothing in the Constitution that stipulates how to do it. However, the procedure is in the Articles of Confederation. Hmm. So the Articles of Confederation still are in operation. Hmm. And I'll show you something really, really interesting about the Articles of Confederation. <clears throat> um... They actually have a book that just has it in there, so I've been reading it through a book. Let's see if I can f find the actual... Whoa, wait a second. What you got there? Withholding is required at the time you make a payment of an amount subject to withholding. A payment is made to a person if that person realizes income, whether or not there is an actual transfer of cash or other property. A payment is considered made to a person if it is paid for that person's benefit. That's interesting. For oh, example, yeah. a payment made to a creditor of a person in satisfaction of that person's debt to the creditor is considered made to the person. Payment is also consi considered made to the person if it is made to the person's agent. Now, I'm going to show you where this comes from. Uh, I'm going to let you share your screen. I'm going to close these windows out. <clears throat> Go All ahead right. and... Uh, you can share now. <clears throat> All right, hold on one second. I'm looking for something very important. There's a lusty man. Every now and then I get a little bit lusty. I just want some boner pills. Lusty man. <laughs> he's at... He's at the guy station getting pills, getting four logos. Gonna go home and have a great time, cause his name is fucking Lusty. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> it's too good, dude. <sighs> if you were a wedding singer, man, I tell no, you. Don't ever would... let anybody tell you we aren't clowns, man. Don't there ever would... let anybody tell you. There would never be divorce. If you were the no. wedding singer. <laughs> Never, dude. <laughs> Every Never. time there's like a fight in that marriage, it'd be like the wedding singer. And everyone would go, oh, yeah, yeah. And that'd be the end of that fight. The wedding uh -huh. singer. Oh, yeah, yep. yeah. 
<laughs> I'd, be dance, I'd, be, I'd be in the in the fucking mankini dancing around like a ballerina, ballerina, singing now about fucking up. boner pills and four locos and all sorts of good stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh god, fucking four locos, man! I got stories about four locos, man. Great stories, horrible stories. You still looking for that thing? Yeah, there's. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you. Um, <clears throat> The Articles of Confederation. Do so it. Got to share the whole screen, right? Because this thing is... Uh... <coughs> share everything, bro. Share everything. Share it all. All right. Bear yourself to the world, Lusty. It says that it was in force uh, until 1789. Now, here's something really interesting. So here's the transcripts, right? Um, and here are the, here are the states... So they have the states. Look what it says here. It says to to all to whom uh, these presents shall come. We, the undersigned delegates of the states, affix to our names and send greeting. Whereas the delegates of the United States of America in Congress assembled. Now, this is a very interesting th term. The United States of America in Congress assembled. Okay. So they, they, they always preface it like this throughout this document. Okay, on the fifth day, I know, okay, um, the Articles of Confederation, perpetual union between the states of New Hampshire, Massachusetts Bay, Rhode Island, and the province plantations, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia, in the words following, Articles, Articles of Confederation, perpetual union between the states, well, okay, so it's just rereading that. The still of this confederacy, and I, I had to go find this, dig this word up. It's like that big arching sign. Like when you enter something, like in Jurassic Park, when they go into that big, it says Jurassic Park. Which word? S Which word? Still. Oh. Right? So they, they're kind of saying like the still. Oh, oh, it's, oh. It's like used figuratively, not literally, but a figurative sense of like that big giant arching sign. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The United States. They're going into like Jurassic Park, yeah. Right, yeah, the United States of America. Some dinosaurs in the background with like, with like people on their backs with like machine guns blasting yeah. them in the sky with like fireworks and like barbecue barbecue grills and explosions. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. People smoking M80s. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're smoking M80s like cigars. <laughs> Boom! America! <laughs> Fuck you! Yeah. Eating eat raw steaks. <laughs> eating raw steaks, dude. Eating like eating animals that are still alive. America! Fuck oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so here's something really interesting. So uh, each state retains its sovereignty, freedom, and independence, every power, jurisdiction, and right, which is not by this confederation expressly delegated to the United States in Congress assembled. So they're telling you that the United States is Congress assembled. That's what the United States is. That makes sense because I've, I've read some places where the, the Congress is basically like the board of directors of the corporation. Right. So they're saying like... Um, like the Congress is the board of directors and then the president is the c sitting CEO. Right. I've read about that. Right. So now this whole thing talks about like this is basically a trust contract. Okay. This is like a trust. Like it's saying like, okay, all the states have its own sovereignty, freedom, independence. They have their own power, jurisdiction. They have their own rights. All right. Um which is not by this confederation expressly delegated to the United States and Congress assembled. Right. So it is a trust agreement that the United States is kind of holding this stuff for these, uh, for these guys to keep their independence. Okay. Now this is really interesting. It says the better to secure and perpetuate mutual friendship and intercourse among the people, of the different States in this union now, here's where it gets really interesting. The free inhabitants of each of these states, paupers, vagabonds, and fugitives from justice accepted, shall be entitled to all privileges and immunities of free citizens in the several states. So, mm. right there, they're telling you that there's two different types of uh, statuses within the land. There are free citizens of the several states and free inhabitants of each of these states. Minus the paupers, vagabonds, and fugitives. 
from the paupers thing, that's where like the you know gold or silver coins on you. That's like you know the uh, vagrancy laws come from stuff like that. So if you have like silver coins on you, you can't be considered a pauper. And that's why like if you send like uh, by the way, if this is something really interesting. I don't know if you've heard about this, but if you do. Um, if you have a court case and you put a $21 silver bond into the court case, it screws up the whole court case because it removes the uh, idea that one, you're the debtor and two, that you're a pauper, right? So now you're the creditor over the case and you're not a pauper. You've proved it by putting on this 21 silver dollar uh, bond to bond the case. And because they don't deal in, they don't deal in real money. They only deal in fiat currency. It screws up their bookkeeping. How do you get how do you get silver bonds? <clears throat> Make them. You don't just give them <laughs> silver coins. You don't. Do you give them silver coins? I mean, you could take a picture of twenty one silver coins and then sign an affidavit saying that you you will pledge these twenty one silver coins uh, to your court case oh, and then deposit that as a bond. Interesting. Yeah. That's one way to do it. Or get a twenty one dollar money order and then write the bond out. Say this is twenty one dollars of silver. Since the money orders are supposedly backed by gold and silver. Interesting. Yeah. So th there's a couple ways to do it. That those are nice ways to do it because the twenty one the picture I think is a nice thing to do with the affidavit. Or you could just write a bond. And what are they going to do? Show us the twenty one silver coins. Well, what's right. the, the a little bit tricky about that is like I have one silver coin that's fucking huge. It's like a. It's like an eight eight ounces or something. I don't know, or oh, ten well, ounces, or like fifteen ounces. It's got a, it's got a big fucking dragon on it. It comes in like a wooden case and shit. It's like a four hundred dollar coin. Uh, yeah, well, you just use that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like a four hundred silver dollar bond. <laughs> yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. But it it fucks up their whole uh, their whole thing because all they're doing is they're just using debt notes, and you're not using debt notes. You're using real true money. Currency. Lawful money, yeah. Lawful money. So it totally screws up their whole thing, and they can't call you a debtor. Only the debtor is the one that loses the case. So because you, you're crediting the case with real, you know, de jure money, their their fiat currency can't hold the candle to it. So it yeah. really, it, it's very interesting. It does screw up their stuff. But it does get, it also rebuts the presumption of being a pauper. So the free inhabitants of each of these states and then the free citizens in the several states. All right. Now, here we have the right to travel clause in here. And the people of each state shall have the free ingress and regress to and from any other state. Well, there you go. Yeah. Now, as a U.S. citizen, they would, they would translate that to mean between locations in the District of Columbia. <clears throat> right. Yeah. And uh, the privileges in trade and commerce, subject to the same duties and positions. So, and look, full faith and credit is still in here. So there's a lot of really good stuff in here. And in this is where they tell you how they make the states. The states are not made. Uh, there's nothing in the Constitution itself that makes the state. Now, what's interesting is because here in our Article 4 of this, they have the free inhabitants of the states and the free citizens in the several states. So if we go all the way back here, I'm going to go to here. This is the acts of the first Congress. Okay. This is the first Congress. So the first Congress actually had the constitution in there and the bill of rights. All right. Like look, uh, right. And then it had this stuff. So that was a little bit before that, but that's all there is before that. So look at this. This is held in New York city, right? I'll zoom in a little bit. Make it a little easier to sing. Yeah, boy. All right, George Washington, President, John Adams, Vice President, right? Statue one. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, and it says, I, and they give, the, here's the uh, oath, I, A, B, do solemnly swear or affirm, as the case may be, that I will support the Constitution of the United States. The said oath or affirmation shall be administered within three days after passing of this act by any one member of the Senate to the president of the Congress and by him to all members of the secretary. Okay. Now, there's another thing here. So it's interesting. So you go, okay, well, how did they delineate who's the free inhabitants and who are the free citizens? 
and here. Well, it's delineated in this statute somewhere around here, one of these. And they, they tell you how to distinguish Slippers, dry fish. Huh? Slippers, dry fish. What else we got? That's Candles. Like malt. Malt per bushel. Uh, coffee. You got so expensive. One cent. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm thinking about all the like silver that I have at home. And I'm like, you know, if I went back in time with all that amount of silver, I mean, I could have had myself uh, two log cabins. 480 pounds of, of unmanufactured pure <laughs> tobacco, it looks like. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Leather gloves. <laughs> <laughs> I would have so bought badass. like 200,000 acres of land. <laughs> there you go. Playing cards. Oh, playing cards. Ten cents Beautiful. for playing cards. They, they, that was uh, Those are expensive. God holy damn. crap. I know, right? Ten cents well, for playing cards. You know why? Cards. You know why? Because it, they were all handmade. It was, must have taken like fucking ninety years to make it. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. It's in here. Oh, here we go. No, damn. Is there a citizen, citizens built in foreign countries. No. Every barrel of pickled fish is five cents. I gotta find this thing. There, vessel. There. I saw a vessel was a, a U.S. citizen. If you go up, I saw that. At the very top of that page. No, it says uh, the belonging and to... And belong to a citizen. Oh, okay. 50 cents per ton. Never mind. No, there's some interesting uh, stuff in here. I'm looking for this where it talks about how to become a citizen. <clears throat> there's a very specific process that you have to do to become a citizen. Otherwise, you'd be considered a free inhabitant on the land. Oh, yeah. That's the, uh, that's the one that I'm always talking about. Um, I know what you're talking about. I mean, uh, yeah, and all this stuff is still on the books. This is not like this was stopped or anything like that. Like they got in the state of Connecticut, in the state of New York, all right, state of New Jersey. So they have these states of, but these are all like trust holding uh, companies. And, and it makes a lot of sense when you start looking at like reading trust contracts and then you start reading this, you go, oh my, it, it just is. Uh, belonging to a citizen or citizens of the United States shall be admitted. Now, that's all the... Okay, I thought this would be a lot faster to find, but now it's going to take a while. <clears throat> anyway, there is a specific process. You have to take an oath to become a citizen. Otherwise, they, can, they just consider you a, a, an alien. And it's written in here somewhere, one of these things. Yeah, so, I have it here. Uh, <clears throat> two stat. It says here, two stat, one, five, three... C28, subsection 1. So chapter 28, subsection 1. Revised statute 2165. An alien may be admitted to become a citizen of the United States in the following manner and not otherwise. Oh, yeah. Why don't you share that? I'm, I'm looking for I can't find it. This is just on my website. It's not from the actual original material. Can you do a search function on that particular document? Will it, will it, will it work or does it not work? What, what's it called again? Uh, you would type in, an alien may be admitted to, and that should be enough to get you there. Sometimes PDFs will do that. Sometimes they won't. All right. Um, let me type in organic laws or statutes at large. No, I meant use the search function on that, that PDF document you just had up. <clears throat> oh. Sometimes it'll work, actually. Sometimes it won't. Uh, depends on the scan, and it depends on the program, and it depends on what, you know. Alien. No, it's not on here. Let's see if anything. Yeah, it's, it has search functions, but. An alien may be admitted to. You don't, you don't get nothing? Aliens. Concerning aliens. An act concerning aliens. It says pay. And now my computer is getting stuck. Oh, whatever. Yeah. It is what it is. Yeah, now, now my computer's frozen, so forget it. I'm not going to find it now. But, yeah, it, it does have a uh, – the presumption is that – but now they flipped the presumption. See, the presumption was that you're, you're a free inhabitant until you take this oath to become a citizen, right? But you had to take an oath, and I think that's how they issued the passports back in the day. So if you wanted to leave and go somewhere, you wanted to get a passport, you had to take an oath first to become a citizen to say that you were a citizen – then you can get a passport. Otherwise, you would be considered a free inhabitant, not, not a U.S. citizen. Or, well, back then it was a state citizen. 
So the citizens yeah, of each state. Yeah, free inhabitant, state citizen, or national. It kind of all means the same thing, you know, over the time, over the years. Right. Yeah, because then they created that federal citizenship, and they created under the, under a, as a birthright citizenship, or, which is all feudal. Pretty interesting. But that's the, and that goes all, and that leaks all, that permeates all the way to present time when we're dealing with this withholding agent because you're under the presumption that you're a non resident alien. Your company is uh, presuming that you're going to be uh, acting as a resident alien, but they'll put you down as a citizen, and now there's just more re- presumptions to rebut. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's really weird. It's almost like, crazy yeah yeah it's pretty wild so it's it's like really funny because then you go well if you're in a free inhabitant um how could they have jurisdiction over you since you're not unless you've taken an oath to you know allegiance to the to the constitution then you you actually have no allegiance to it and none of their regulations rules or anything like that would apply to you the presumption the 14th amendment is the presumption that you have to rebut, which we were doing with the passports. You know, the passport's one way to do it. The affidavits. Anywhere they ask you for your U.S. citizenship, like uh, even like a driver's license, if you wanted to get one of those or change yours or a, a voter registration, if you wanted to, you know, change that or get rid of it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The voter registration thing is kind of like, just, just get rid of it. Uh, and yeah, some, right. pe- some people are like, no, I want to, I want to become an elector. I mean, I personally don't see like they're a foreign corporation. What, what do you have? Do you have no business voting or electing in their private corporate matters? Yeah, it's sort of like I always think of it like if you're so upset about what's going on in Washington D.C., why aren't you upset about what's going on in in uh, in, in France or Italy? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, people yeah, the are. Same thing. Some people are so like they're all upset about what's going on in the Middle East and stuff like that, and I'm like, I I, I don't even know, I, nor do I even care. That does not affect me. It's not affecting my life. Like, if people are dying, that sucks. I'm very sad to hear that, but uh, to get involved, it's, it's, sorry, man, we got enough problems over here as it is. Yeah, they're trying to fan the flames of like a World War Three kind of a thing. It's crazy. Yeah, but, I don't like that. Yeah, and they're talking about the draft. Like, and, you know, that's one thing that's going to really, uh, you know, we can really hold their feet to the fire on this whole thing about being national or free inhabitant is the fact that. Um, can't be drafted. We can't be dra- Yeah, we can't be drafted. So all the people who are going to be like not trying to trying to get out of being drafted, they're going to all run to our, our side of the coin. It's going to be great. Yeah. They're going to be like, all right, what are you guys doing? Well, we're, we're <laughs> It's a private corporation wanting to go uh, start a war and have you or your children die for a cause that you don't believe in. It doesn't even apply to you, has nothing to do with you, and this is the, this is the way to rebut the presumption that you have no choice. I think a draft is, plus a draft is a violation of the 13th Amendment anyway. Exactly. Exactly right. So... But a U.S. citizen wouldn't be privy to the Thirteenth Amendment. That's why. Well, yeah. Well, that's a dip, well. That's a, yeah. <laughs> they have no rights. <laughs> the only the only right that a U.S. citizen has is to 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 residence within the territorial boundaries of the District of Columbia, which is a beautiful, such that's a right. powerful you know situation. You know, it's such a yes. And they have the privilege of paying to work. <laughs> yes. You get to yes, pay to, you go have to the, work. <laughs> You have the privilege of being bent over and and obliterated and having your butthole obliterated. You have That's the right. privilege of of being obliterated. It's a such a beautiful privilege, you know. Oh yeah. It's like, excuse me, do you want to have a job? Yes, I would like to eat and to have a roof over my head. All right. Well, um, to work, <laughs> you're gonna have to pay us. <laughs> It's like, would you like a job? It's like, yeah, I mean, I would like to work and live and, and make money and actually survive. And I don't know, maybe like take a girl on a date. I don't know, maybe have like an old kind of 
piece of shit car I could drive, and they're like, whoa, 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 buddy. <laughs> What, Mr. Gluttony over here, Mr. Seven Deadly Sins, how about you fucking pump the brakes for a second? Jesus. <laughs> You'd be lucky if we give you a four logo and a fucking boner pill, bro. <laughs> Chill the fuck out. <laughs> We're going to change that $6 on, on pump two to five. <laughs> yeah, dude. You keep fucking talking, you're going to get $3 on pump two. You ain't even going to get home in your fucking shit box, bro. Yeah, if the Fred Flint's in right. your car home. <laughs> Yeah, you're gonna need to get that get that downhill, bro. You better fucking Google Maps that shit on the fucking geology. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> you hit any uphills, you're done, brother. You aren't making it home, brother. We'll be piecing that car out on the side of the road before you fucking sleep tonight, bro. You know what I mean? <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, it's uh. So so what else? What else you been going through? What else been going on? What else been You've been realizing and shit. Fighting well, people I, on TikTok. Oh my god, the TikTok thing, man! <laughs> I tell you, um, the the bar attorneys are freaking hilarious because they just keep going on and on about how you need a driver's license to drive. And I go, "You're right. There is no argument here. The fundamental problem is you're not defining what a driver is." You're not telling people the definition of driver. And then I go and post it on TikTok like, well, here's what it means. First two words, one employed. One employed, right, to drive or impel a vehicle, right? And it has a whole list of things and motor vehicles, one of them. But it's a job. A driver is a job. And I keep putting that out there. And then they go, well, um, you know, you need a license to drive. And I go. I'm Imagine like, fighting one of these motherfuckers in court, too. Imagine <laughs> it, dude. It's just, like, too good, bro. Oh, it's man. It's too good. Bring the jury out here for this public execution, man. This fuck is going to be better than a fucking Netflix special, bro. Let's go. It's Let's like, go. So so the, the question really is this. If you have to go into court, right, and you just pull out the definition of driver, so it says one employed, now you ask the prosecutor, um, the discovery that I have from you doesn't have any evidence of me being employed or getting any kind of compensation for for uh for conveying this uh car or this private automobile around do you have any evidence of me being compensated for controlling this automobile there you go he's gonna say you bought gas <laughs> 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 what the last guy? <laughs> well, you, you bought, bought gas. gas. Oh, fucking guy. You bought man. gas. So you're you're. Oh, oh, man, guess, you guys, you guys and your fucking Congress. presumptions, man. God damn. I it's know, like, the presu- yeah. dude. That's a, it's all about rebutting presumptions. So yeah, that that's the thing is just say, do you have any evidence of uh, me getting compensated for um, controlling that automobile on the road? That's one thing you could do. Another thing is you can say, um, all right, I have no problem with this. I, I can accept everything. I just need to see uh, any and all evidence that the state of, let's say, Connecticut, the state of Connecticut, um, owns that particular piece of property in which the alleged police officer stopped me um, and then ticketed me, saying that I gave me a bill of attainder, which is unconstitutional. Um, don't say that part though, but just say bill of attainder in which I received a bill of attainder from the uh, alleged police officer saying that I was in violation of some kind of code. Can you please show me a deed or title that shows that the state of Connecticut owns that piece of land, that very specific piece of land and soil? Yeah. Because otherwise they don't have any jurisdiction over that area. Yeah, I'm going in a different direction. Uh, you know, now now it's like I get handed a payment bond and I just make it payable to myself. Or I, make, just make it pay, I just make it payable to the principal right away. You know what I mean? So they, they hand me a, a payment bond or performance bond or whatever. And I just write, without recourse, pay to the order of Brandon Joe Williams in all capital letters. Buy. And then below that, I'll, uh, right next to that, I'll sign. Right? And then I make a line, and then it says, you know, Brandon Joe Williams in normal uh, capitalization, and it says slash attorney in fact. And that's how I would do it now. It's uh... And then at that point, all they can do is just put points in your license or take your license away, but I'm, I've already got all that planned out, and I'm going gonna, 
I'm going after the DMV. Did I tell you the story about the, uh, the motorcycle? The whole motorcycle experience that I had recently? You told me, but go, what, you tell me again. Kind of a long story. I don't know if I told you everything, and I've never, ever, ever, ever shown the documents. So I could do like a exclusive here. I would All just right. need to. I would need to edit the document though, because it's got fucking personal information on there. Well, I'll tell you what. These crazy I fucking can, pickles. I can show you something while you're doing that, which would be very, very cool. <clears throat> I think everyone would like this one. Um, yeah, do you it. Know, speaking of this bond thing. Um, I can show you how to find the municipal bonds and the QCIP numbers. Uh, that's on the PACER or on the uh, CR or UN, whatever the fuck it is? Nope. Show us, dude. Okay. Let's do it. All right. So the website is emma.msrb.org. Electronic Municipal Market Access. Right? So this has something. I don't know what um, MS. RB means I forgot. But if you go in here, let's say you type in a state name. Let's type in uh, state of California. All right. California, County of Orange, Department of Water Resources, State of California. And let's just do State of California. And look at all these bonds they have. Economic recovery bonds, refunding, economic recovery bonds, state of California. Actually, you know what? Let's do a town. Pick a town in California. Let's do that. Like Los Angeles or something smaller? Uh, yeah, do a small town. Hemet, H-E-M-E-T. H-E-M-E-T. Hemet, California. There it is. Okay, so Hemet, California are issuing, uh, they, oh, look at this, issue description not available. But what do they have here? A bunch of QCIP numbers. All right, now if we click on one of these, we'll get, okay, maturity date. This one matures in 1985. <laughs> so they're probably, they probably already got paid out of it or they used it to re-up on new bonds later on. But this is the QCIP, which means that if you look on here, no trade data, trade ratings, disclosure documents, event filing, finance operation filing, event filing. Okay, so they, look, uh, the MSU be, began collecting discussion closures on July 1st. Okay. Most recent. Let's go. All. No, nothing. Final scale. But we got a QSIP number. So that means there's bonds inside here because this is some kind of, this is a fund. And you can actually pull this up on Fidelity and go look at what the value of it is currently on Fidelity.com. Hemet California has a fund? <clears throat> it has a QSIP number. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a fund too. Yeah, look. Let's do that. We'll hmm. go uh, fund. Let's just go here. Go type this in. Boom. Fund. Uh, let's go Fidelity. Let's type in Fidelity. I wonder if it's a boner pill uh, fund or if it's a fucking for local fund or both. You know? This is it's probably both because this is how this is how they this is what they're doing. So they take all the bonds from the court cases and they stick it into this fund. OK, now here's the fund code. OK, these are fund managers. Say all the court cases. You mean all the court cases in that city? Right. Hmm. Well, so the way the states do this is that the city has its own fund, right? Like there's the QSIP for that fund. Now here's the thing. You can't not copy this. They won't let you copy and paste the QSIP number. So you have to actually write it in um, piece by piece. So if I go QSIP, I have to do it like that. So I was looking at another one. Um, <clears throat> but let's do this. We got QSIP. What are the numbers? Uh, four, <laughs> two, a few five, windows there are open four, there, buddy. <laughs> four, two, three, five. That's my duty, sir. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Two, four, six. One more tab, bro. That's all I need is one more tab, bro. Oh, yeah, one more tab. Oh, come on, not another tab. Oh, oh man, these guys are getting Those so guys stressed. Those are such assholes, dude. Oh, Jesus Christ. We should, we should get them to come on this show. <laughs> such pieces of shit. 
be the happiest life ever. Just, you know what you know, I'll do? I'll just, again, I'll just keep hitting new tab over and over again. I'm like, how, how you guys feeling? How are you guys feeling? <laughs> they off themselves live on the fucking feed, dude. They're like, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So we got fun name ticketer. Okay. With this. I hate when they do this crap. It's a little devil. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're like, don't do this. <laughs> No. That's so funny. All right, Q-sip. Oh, come on. <coughs> Team, I'm going to be smart. I'm going to do this. Q-sip, look up number. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. You can't use Fidelity. You have to use another website because Fidelity wants you to sign in and do all that crap. But boom, enter, and it comes right up. Oh, oh, this one was done. So, yeah, they're right on this one. When it matured in 1985, it's been done for. So they're not going to collect on that one anymore. What is it, Emma.org or something? Emma.msrb.org. And it lists out the QSIP numbers. So some of these funds have been closed. Uh, one of eight. So they, I guess it says that they haven't done any since 1992. That's the last maturity date. But they're being, look at this, issue description not available. But if we go to, let's say, uh, Los Angeles. Yeah, I'm looking at the city of Los Angeles right now. Yeah, dude. Yeah, they got all kinds of stuff in there. Issues. Trade activity. Right? They got bonds for everything. Bonds, general obligation bonds, social bonds, tax and revenue anticipation notes. These other bonds, revenue bonds. Now, I, I suspect that some of these general obligation bonds, taxable social bonds, these are the bonds that they're using for the courts. Mm. As long as you have the QSIP number, you can actually go and report this. Hey, let's click on this. General obligation series 2021A, taxable social bonds, California. So we'll go back to here. Five three five four. It's gonna erase it, isn't it? PM five five four. Ah, crap! I forgot it. You can't even PM five. Keep it in there. No, I just gotta remember all the digits. Uh, this one's not in here either. That's weird. I was finding them like crazy yesterday, and then it would give you everything. It would give you the symbol number, the description. I mean, I was. I was on a roll yesterday with these things. So, too bad. All right, well, I edited this document. I will show you guys the adventure I had recently with my, this motorcycle MCO bullshit. It was kind of funny. And this whole thing is going to spark a whole lawsuit and all the good stuff. So, um, this is what I sent to. So, I bought a brand new motorcycle. You'll see, you'll see, I, I write the whole thing. I break the whole thing down. It's a story inside the affidavit. So, um. But it's going to the uh, the office of the director of Department of Motor Vehicles in California. It's going to Mike, the general manager over at uh, BMW Motorcycles. It's going to um, uh, our usuals, all of our best friends, Merrick E. Garland and uh, uh, Rob Bonta, uh, attorney generals, right? Mm -hmm. They love us. And then before that, we've got the definition from 18 U.S.C. of motor vehicle uh, and then the definition of use for commercial purposes, which is located inside the definition of motor vehicle. Information and instructions. Uh, at the end of April of 2023, I purchased a 2023 Triumph Speed Triple 1200 RS uh, paid in full from BMW Motorcycles of Burbank. During this transaction, I told my general manager my main concern uh, is that I will be getting the original manufacturer's uh, statement of origin MSO. Mike agreed in that closing of this transaction after the motorcycle was fully paid for. We filled out the back of the MSO uh, together, and the original MSO was given to me as I, I took possession of the motorcycle. Um, sadly, during the transaction between myself and Mike, he was under the false impression that the motorcycle needed to be registered as a commercial motor vehicle prior to me being able to take possession of the motorcycle. Due to the situation, I was forced under threat of not being able to take possession of the motorcycle to fill out some basic paperwork uh, regarding the motorcycle to be sent to the corporation known as the Department of Motor Vehicles. I signed without prejudice and as the agent on behalf of the principal on all the documentation, and I have enclosed a copy of my durable power of attorney for your records. 
Uh, I never signed the power of attorney section on any of the documents sent to the Department of Motor Vehicles because I never wanted to release my or the principal superior title of the motorcycle. I will not be using the motorcycle in any commercial capacity, and I negate all contracts that myself and the principal have with any corporate element. I do not live in the United States as it is defined in 28 U.S.C. 3215. And as described in UCC 9-307H, I also do not reside, reside in the state of California, hence why the address used on the paperwork begins with C slash O. Any bonds or securities that were created on behalf of the principal need to be instantaneously closed, and all currency collected or created on behalf of this action needs to be immediately issued to the principal, or it is a securities violation. I have enclosed the motor vehicle registration, quote-unquote, and the certificate of title, quote-unquote, in the mailing to the receiver number one above, Department of Motor Vehicles. Now, on the title and on the registration, I wrote, like, uh, in red letters, in huge red letters, like, permanently destroy, destroy permanently, multiple times all over the entire documents, and then circled all of them. So that was really, really fucking obvious, right? Uh, please permanently destroy this certificate of title and also permanently destroy the registration. Also, please also permanently destroy any other papers, securities, digital documents, accounts, communications, or anything regarding this motorcycle or the principal. This motorcycle will not be operated in commerce, and I hereby withdraw all contract or interest with any and all parties involving this motorcycle. The principal will not be involving himself in the motor vehicle theft prevention program, otherwise known as registration, as found in 34 CFR 12611. I do not wish to contract with the corporate foreign state of California or the Department of Motor Vehicles or any other incorporated entity at all whatsoever. This affidavit expresses a complete disavowal and total rejection of all contracts as this motorcycle will not be involved in commerce for the duration of superior ownership by either myself or the principal. All contracts are now void as if they never existed in the first place because they didn't. I have enclosed proof of trademark of the principal's name, Brandon Joe Williams, as per serial number blank. All uses of the principal's name are to be instantaneously and fully scrubbed and removed from all databases, computers, paperwork, etc. This motorcycle is now being placed along with the MSO in an unincorporated private irrevocable trust uh, of, of myself, agent, as the trustee. This motorcycle will uh, only be used for non-commercial private purposes. As for the future possible transfer of the motorcycle, I will be transferring superior title of this motorcycle, of this vehicle, using either notarized bill of sale and or the MSO itself. Please send a letter to the P.O. Box found at the top of this request once the requests in this letter have been completed. Please complete a full removal of all information regarding this motorcycle, myself as the agent, and any, other, uh, any information of the principal within 10 business days uh, of receipt. If there are uh, any uh, refunds available for any fees that were paid, please return them to either the principal at the P.O. Box mentioned at the top of this letter or mail that refund back to Mike at BMW Motorcycles of Burbank. Thank you. Right. So it's a pretty simple document. I wasn't going to think too much of it, right? Right. And then two months later, I got back this, and I got fu- I was laughing and ready to ready to kill someone at the same time, right? So here, here's the letter I got back. This is like two and a half months later. You can see the date on this original document was june 13th i usually try to mail things on the same day that i date the document so it was probably like 14th or 15th or or the 13th that i got it out but you know it took probably a couple weeks to get all the way up there registered mail now this one (laughs) i'm not even sure if it's dated it's so fucking funny uh it looks like it's not even dated that's uh, that's even funnier (laughs) so there's no date it says brandon joe williams blah blah blah. uh this letter is in response to your recent correspondence this is about two months later the department of motor vehicles dmv and its employees disagree with your statements and will not be bound by them bro i was fucking like (laughs) i was like Someone wants to fucking. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I was like, I was so angry and laughing so hard at the same time. I don't think I've ever been, I don't think I've ever experienced such a such a fascinating mixture of laughter and, and absolute absolute rage in my entire life after reading that first sentence, bro. Uh, every person within the boundaries of the state of California is subject to its laws and must comply with California requirements for licensing, registration, and insurance in order to operate a motor vehicle on public roads. 
Under California law, driving a vehicle is a privilege granted by the state through its power to regulate traffic is not a right, regardless of whether the travel is for personal use or commercial gain. DMV does not have the authority to exempt you from licensing and registration laws. Additionally, California law establishes punitive measures to be taken when a person operates a motor vehicle without complying with licensing and registration laws. The person is subject to citation and or the vehicle subject to impoundment by a law enforcement officer. This is the last correspondence you will receive from the DMV concerning these issues. DMV will not expend any further resources responding to future correspondence. And then this is the funniest part of all. There's no name here. It's just <laughs> customer care section, customer services division, because they know better than to put their stupid fucking <laughs> personal name on this document. Right? So, they're like hiding behind the tree like this. This is them. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I've never I, I've talked a lot about this, but I've never actually shown this document. So this is like an exclusive for this show with the Lustinator. Um, now we're talking. So yeah, it's uh, it's pretty fucking humorous. It's a it's a comedy show. It's a comedy show in document form. Uh, there, there's so many there's so many things. You got breach of fiduciary duties. You've got involuntary servitude. You've got peonage. You've got uh you've got so many different things here. So. Uh, you know, they're, they're definitely high on my hit list. I plan on, on going after the DMV for like $100 million on my first shot. Um, and it's going to be for like a lifetime of anxiety, a lifetime of, of nondisclosure, uh, securities fraud. It's going to be, you know, and I'm going to make them in the court case prove with, with irrefutable evidence that all of my information Every single word, every single phrase, every single breath of the fact that I even exist is completely purged from every single one of all of their computers. And that's my plan. So, oh, man. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give them so, my driver's license and I'm going to make them live in person shred the fucking thing. And I want to videotape of it. <laughs> so, you so know what I kinda, did? That's kind of the direction I'm heading right now. You know what I did with the DMV is I sent them a fee schedule and I told them that if they say that I'm driving or in any way whatsoever, that my right to travel is being restricted and keep referring to me as a driver or that I'm subject to uh, licensing or registration fees, it's going to cost like a million dollars for that. And they sent me back a letter and the letter was like two sentences. They were crazy careful to not break the fee schedule. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm dead serious. Yeah, let me see if I can find that letter. It's buried somewhere. But That's fucking hilarious. Let's see if I can find it. It was so long ago. <laughs> I don't even know where it is. Lusty needs to get organized, huh? Well, no, I have I have folders for everything. I keep everything. Look, I got my my uh non citizenship evidence from Homeland Security. There you go. I got a bunch of these. I love these, man. You just send that into the court and go, can you can you explain what my status is since Homeland Security doesn't know? <laughs> there you go. That's a, that's a good way. Like, can can you move. prove it? Because they can't. <laughs> I love that one. What is this? This is, um, oh, this was the letter that I wrote to them. And this is the fee schedule. It's a very short fee schedule. See, not a very big one. It's short, sweet, go. right to the point. Couple trail, yeah. So listen, uh, two trillion dollars. See, I signed it, agent for the uh, principal. Oh, there you go. Oh, look at this! I found a money order. Look at this, infinite money right here. Hey, now we're talking. Yeah, one dollar. <laughs> remember, remember when I was on the phone? Remember when you were on the phone with me and I got like like fifty one dollar money orders from the from the uh, post office? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, great stuff. <laughs> These work, man. These work. It's so funny. Um, so we, we've actually paid the IRS with these, right? Like people owe taxes, um, but they won't take it if it goes over a thousand dollars because it says it on the back. So you can do accept it for value on these things and then renegotiate them. It works. Just write paid in full on the front and send in a dollar. Yeah. Well, you just say accept it for value in the amount of, and then you write in the amount. Oh, this is something else. No, promises. Promises. Yeah. Uh, 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 also, also in enclosed with one dollar money order is four hundred and thirty-seven promises and also <laughs> twenty-two and a half kisses. There you go. 
Whoa, kisses, <laughs> dude. Oh. Well, kisses. I, I don't know if you. I don't know if you got the memo. The Federal Reserve just uh, just released a uh, a press release here fairly recently that they're um they're creating a a, a multi tiered system. You have promises. You have hugs, and then you have kisses. There you go. Kisses are like $20 bills. <laughs> hugs are like $10 bills, and then promises are like $1 bills. What about boner pills? Can we make that a currency? Well, it, it would have to be, some, <laughs> it have to be something that's not you know, so, so tangible. It's just way too t- – boner pills, uh, Rhino 9000, <laughs> man. That's just way – it's way too tangible. You know right what I mean? Now, right now. <laughs> this is way too tangible. Yeah. Way too fucking tangible. You have to, you have to go off the beaten path especially, a little especially bit. Especially when so, they kick in. <laughs> yeah. Because so, you got the Rhino 9,000, and then if you're really feeling it, you got the Rhino 90,000, which are the, the ones that you, even the boner pill uh, connoisseurs know to stay away from the 90,000. Yeah, Those they're ones, like, the next day, gonna have, they're, 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 they're still gonna be, hurt. You're, you're going to be passed out for two days because you're not going to have enough blood to run your fucking brain anymore for a couple of days. 48 hours <laughs> shut down. You got you to you overload the system, man, and you got to fucking... <laughs> You got 48 day, 48 hour cool off period, you know. It was like, oh, did you um, hear what happened to Hank? Yeah, oh, yeah. He got the ninety thousand one. He 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 read the label geez. wrong. He snorted the ninety thousand <laughs> off the hooker's ass, and he was dead in sixty hours. Oh man, yeah. yeah so. Bring bring back uh, bloodletting. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, seriously. Oh man. <laughs> you know how to party, old man. You know what I mean? Promises, kisses, hugs. promises. Promises, hugs, kisses. I don't know what would be above that, but that's pretty much the entire new monetary structure coming down the pipeline. <laughs> you see you on the side of the road just going like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What the fuck are you doing on the side of the road? Oh, I'm paying off my car. Chill, bro. Chill, bro. <laughs> Like, just promise me, man. Leave me alone. <laughs> just promise me. You know what? This is kind of getting kind of gay, bro. Just promise me the rest. Just promise me the rest of the kisses and hugs, and I'll be, I'll be, all right. We'll be good. We'll be good. Right. Let's just, just promise him. Promise him, bro. He's right on paper, away from me. <laughs> In another room. <laughs> oh, my God. But then instead of a thumbprint, too fucking funny. do lipstick. <laughs> there you go. See? There you go. One kiss, dude. There you go. Sealed. Uh, uh, given a whole new definition for sealed by a kiss. You know what I mean? <laughs> sealed by a kiss, my dove. You know? I'm gonna, fuck, I'm going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, like you, you close. No, no, like, like you, you send in like a tax bill and you close the back. And it's, you know how they, some, like back in the day, they would do like uh like candle wax and then a stamper. Like yeah, a, yeah, yeah. You do candle wax and you kiss the fucking thing. You <laughs> seal it with a kiss, literally. Right? And they open it and it's got the tax bill endorsed and it's got a fucking Polaroid of your like, of your like gaped asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the quote on the bottom of the Polaroid is a picture you can smell. <laughs> yeah. It says, uh, it says, uh, Merry Christmas, you filthy animal below the fucking... <laughs> A little heart at the end, you know. There you go. <laughs> oh my God, it's too good, bro. It's too good. You know, I was I was going through some of my it documents makes, recently. Put a little Nutella on the uh, on the Polaroid too. <laughs> I was actually I was actually going through a bunch of my documents when I moved into this new apartment. <laughs> and I actually, it's funny. I found a the first time I sent in a new SS4 to the uh, Social Security Administration. I sent in a Polaroid of me in a pickle outfit. They sent back my fucking Polaroid. Can you believe it? No one's ever sent back my Polaroid. There's only one Whoa. organization that's ever sent back my Polaroid ever. Uh, I don't do a whole lot of Polaroids anymore. Uh, I need to get back into it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, maybe with the law firm thing, I'll start. Whenever, <laughs> whenever I send out legal notices, I'll send out a Polaroid. That'd be so fucking funny. But um, um, they sent me back my fucking Polaroid. Can you believe it? <clears throat> I can't. I can't believe that. That is. Uh... It's the ultimate, the ultimate uh, rudeness. The ultimate rudeness. Tell them that so was discrimination. Right. They're, now they're uh, violating anti-discrimination laws. I'll tell them that it, it, was, it was a negotiable instrument art piece and that, that <clears throat> it was actually a payment as per uh, UCC 3-603 subsection B. And uh, that particular art piece, because I'm an art appraiser, uh, was worth several million dollars. And, and so now, now uh, they have to refund 
that rejection because they've defaulted on the loan. And they're rejecting your uh, your uh, identifying as a pickle. Yeah, I think what people should start doing is they should send in Polaroids and they should send in certificates of authenticity signed by you, uh, uh, like literally stapled to the Polaroid, make it look all professional, and then put like estimated value, colon, and then just make up some fucking astronomical number and just, <laughs> just enclose it. Just enclose that in there. Yeah, just say, look, I know it's not U.S. dollars. This is just a bonus for you. Uh just because you're such a great person, you know, the, the, the rest of the, you know, the U.S. dollars are already there because you're going to transfer all the positive value of all those securities to the, back to the principal. But <clears throat> this is just a bonus for you, you know what I mean, a couple million dollars, you know. Well, I'll tell you something that you could do with the DMV. Uh, since they already told you they're not going to write back to you, um, you can actually require them to write back to you. Um, and you can all do this through a notary. So this is really interesting because a notary has judicial powers. A lot of people don't know that. But a notary, because he's under the Secretary of State, just like a judge, and all judges are notaries, um, they actually have uh, judicial powers, semi-judicial powers. They're not like total judges, but they do. They can make a judgment through paperwork. Okay? Um, it's limited, but... It's very interesting what they could do. You can just go and ask the DMV a bunch of questions, okay? Have a notary mail it out for you, and they will present it with an affidavit saying that they're going to be the, uh, the liaison between this uh, uh, situation, okay? And then they, they're you're saying, hey, listen, um, I'm requiring you to answer these questions, sign them under penalty of perjury. And um, if they refuse to answer the questions within 10 days, well, you just send them a notice of default via the notary. If they default on that, and by the way, when you send the notice of default, the notice of default has a counterclaim in it and then a demand for payment. You say, since you didn't answer my questions, you've defaulted in the amount of blah, blah, blah for these reasons. And you can list out your reasons, what they owe you. You say, you know, a uh, million dollars per uh, question not answered, right? If there was like, hey, 20, there we go. You know, <clears throat> every question is a million dollars. So I put 20 questions on there. That's $20 million you owe me now. Uh, the fact that you didn't, uh, you know, didn't give me any response whatsoever, uh, that's another million dollars, right? So that's, we're up to $21 million now. Uh, then you could say, uh, you know, you also owe me for the notary, the use of the notary, which is uh, I'm charging uh, $200 per uh, notary presentment. It doesn't matter what the notary charge. They charge like 50 or 60 depending on the notary, for the presentments. So... And somewhere around there. Currently, right now, those prices could change. I don't know. I'm not a notary. Um, <clears throat> and then, uh, yeah, you do three notices of default. There's a first notice of default, second notice of default, final notice of default. And then you get a judgment against them for, n for not uh, answering the questions, not answering any of those letters. And then even if they come back and answer it saying this is all frivolous, it doesn't matter. It does not matter because as long as you're following the process, right, you're giving them due process. And if they're not going to do it or handle that, those, the, the questions and just say, this is frivolous, we're not going to recognize this, that's totally fine. Go ahead. Because once it's all done, you can take all that paperwork, file it into a UCC-1, okay, put them on as the debtor, put, them, put yourself on as the secured party, and then you do a UCC-3 and assign it to them. Now, once it's assigned to them, you can then take that UCC filings and you can print them out and mail those filings to their bondholders, okay, or to their private investors saying, hey, listen, uh, you want to watch out because this company that you're dealing with, the DMV here, um, is having some uh, financial issues at the moment. They owe me a lot of money. Now, what becomes really interesting is that now, because it's a financing statement, these are financing statements. Financing statements is a statement of your finances, like a bank account, right? Like you get a bank statement every month, you have a financing statement. What have you been financing? <clears throat> well, all that stuff is in the collateral saying that they owe you a debt. So now you have a bank account from which you can use to draw funds from for different purposes. <clears throat> the DMV will now become your private bank in which you can discharge tons and tons of debts for and they have to pay the bill. Hmm. 
so every time you you can do a bill of exchange and cite that UCC uh, document and <laughs> file number as, look, this is my bank account. That's your bank account. Routing number, account number, document number, filing number. Those are your account numbers. And you send that out as your bill of exchange and the DMV must pay it because they're in default. Hmm. Um, so you could do it that way. That way is a little easier because then you don't have to go through the court system. And, um, you know, they can say it's frivolous the whole time. But if, if, if you set up the lien the correct way against them and they say we're not paying anything out, you can just go take their stuff. And you can just, all you do is take all that paperwork, bring it down to the sheriff's office and say, Sheriff, I'm going to need your help with the DMV. They only a, a substantial amount of money. I'd like to get the keys to their building since their building is actually worth less than, you know, this. So help me get the keys to the building. And they'll go down there and they'll have them turn the keys over to you. If, it, if it's, you know, depending on the value of the building. So you can start selling all their property, all that stuff, whatever, because it's yours technically. Until they satisfy the debt. I could definitely use some DMV buildings. <laughs> <laughs> So <clears throat> that's one way to do it. People, I, just, I reopen it as the as the as the as the DMT, and then they come in, and then it's the same. It's all the same <laughs> shit, but everyone's in like the DMT. Everyone's in fucking. Everyone's in pickle outfits. All the all the workers and and all the people going out and doing like test training. It's like a it's like a drift course. There you go. So it's it's no longer like stop and turn left and all that. It's like you got to drift around these cones and shit. And if you don't, you get screamed at. All the instructors are fucking drunk. That'd be perfect. Oh yeah. So, all right, um, so that is something you can do with that, all right? That's, like, another option. Um, I love that idea because it's, it's a little less um, – <clears throat> you don't get stuck with the courts as much. And you, you did give them due process. So even if you were to go and try to get, like, a, a judgment with a, with a court against them, you'll win because you've already given them due process. You have everything on record already. So it's pretty. It's a pretty powerful uh, move to take on, against like them. Yeah, I'm starting to learn a lot about the court system and stuff like that. You're basically doing. You're basically doing due process through the court case. So when you start a court case, what you're doing is you're you're basically just saying the the court is the intermediary, and basically what you're doing is you're going to start doing due process through the lawsuit itself, and that's that's kind of how it how how the the lawsuit itself is the is the enforcement end of how you get and that's kind of why i'm i'm going in this direction because i'm just sick and tired of having to having absolutely no leverage over anybody and 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 paying 500 bucks to get the courts involved is 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 well worth the amount of bullshit and stress and resending documents and all the fucking stupid games they play you just knock all that right out the window it seems like so it's a lot to learn, but I'm learning about trial procedure. Uh, I'm learning about the, the the five different types of. I, here's another exclusive. I'll go ahead and I'll go ahead and do one more uh, exclusive for this show. Nice. Uh, someone sent me this course, and and I didn't have very high hopes. Okay. So so I had this guy. Uh, I'm not even going to mention his name. Somebody who I paid, you know, quite a bit of money to, who has quite a bit of litigation experience, and he ended up flaking on me for months and months and months and disappearing and now I can't even get a refund from the guy. It's a it's a mess. Uh so he's 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 fucking really pissed me off. Uh I, I really thought he was gonna be my guy. Uh and he is not. So I kinda went back to the drawing board. Somebody sent me this and uh this is a really old, kind of shitty looking nineteen ninety seven website. Literally it's I think from I sent this to you. <laughs> Someone else sent it to me. I had a few people send it to me, and it was it wasn't it might have been the one that you sent me. I don't know. If somebody sent this to me, and I I kind of had it sitting there, and I was kind of thinking about it for a while, and I was kind of like beat up a little bit from this whole getting fucked over by this mentor guy, and I was like, ah, eh, fuck it, two hundred forty nine dollars. I was like, ah, eh, what what do I have to lose, right? So I I paid for this, and and it's actually pretty fucking impressive. Uh, I have to admit, uh, I wasn't going to say too much about it, and and I I haven't been. On top of it, like I'd like to be. Uh, uh, I don't know if I can log into this. Let me see if I can log into this real quick. Hold on. Now I got a question. That two fifty. 
Uh, is that a lifetime membership? No, it's like two fifty for a year, and then it's like eighty bucks a year to renew it or something. Oh, okay. All right, that's not too bad. And it's actually uh, pretty good. <clears throat> so this guy, it, it, it's it's a full dictionary that he wrote himself. Uh, so you can actually get in there. I mean, I hope he doesn't doesn't get too pissed off. I, I it's a. Um, there's a link that I'm going to be sharing with people at some point in the future that he sends out these referral links that are fucking cool. Uh, and I can get a little bit of money on, on all the referrals that I send people. I, I don't really. I've don't seen really that. that I know what you're talking about. Cause I was looking through his website. <clears throat> yeah. Let me, let me pull this up on here. Cause this is actually pretty cool. Um, I'm pretty confident. I, w- I didn't want to share it until I, uh, new more, uh, but this one is pretty good. If I can find my login, let me see if I can find it. Can I find it? Can I find my login? Yeah, my name change process was completed. I went down to the, I went down to the uh, courthouse. Because they, I couldn't figure out what the hell my, if it was approved or what. And um, I went down there and uh, they had already approved it by the time I arrived. And so I, I was all dressed up to actually go and present and any questions and all that. And uh, I didn't need to. They gave me the thing. I, I got sick after moving. I moved and then I got sick. I'm at the very end of that. That's why my voice, I got this rasp going on. Uh, but... Uh, it's done. I, I'm going to go down there uh, and get my official documentation of it being all completed and approved here. I don't know. Probably, uh, what is today, Friday? Yep. That's so pretty awesome. So next week, next week I'm going to go get that. That was a long process, right? My, uh, my, my trademark just completed as well. Uh, so it's fully, 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 fully completed. Uh, went through, you know, three or four different permutations on that one that took like a year and a half two years uh so here i'll show you show just you a tad I got. bit i got a copyright of the all calves name right here that's from the minnesota thing right the 50 dollars. no this is the minnesota one <laughs> i'm probably gonna have I've, show... I've got them both on the same thing i just pull it out i go hey look uh let's do business i'm set up to do business but if you use my copyrighted material it's going to cost you two hundred fifty thousand dollars per use so how many tickets would you like to write me today, officer? <laughs> there you go. Now we're fucking talking. <laughs> now we're fucking talking. Oh, the copyright, now dude. I love that. Talking. Copywriting the name. If you want, I'll show you how to do it. We could do it, we could do it right on the uh, show today. Yeah, I'm down. All right, we'll do it. So this is the uh, this is a little bit of the course. I'm not going to show too much because I don't want to like show his trademarked information. This sure. is just going to be a little... This is just going to be a little little taste of what you're going to see in the course. I haven't gone too far. I'm like on the fourth module. There's like set like I don't know how many, fifteen or twenty five or something. So he's teaching here the different rule categories for evidence, and uh, evidence filters can be grouped into six easy to understand. This is full blown like this course is like trial attorney shit. So it's like people are people are submitting evidence. What 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 do you where do you object and how do you object and, and to what type and under what grounds? And basically like this whole section is evidence section, right? So, uh, he's, he's really good at, he's really good at, at just covering the absolute basics of what you actually need to know without any bullshit and without any crap you don't need to know. And he's cutting right? out all the, uh, all the, uh, excess crap. Yeah, so so it's it's pretty cool. I've been going through it kind of slow. It's definitely not fucking easy. I'll tell you that. Um, so uh, you know, even for me, it's it's very new and very different than anything I've ever learned. So uh, I plan on on being ready for trial. I plan on uh, being being able to go to trial. You know, because I think that if you can go to trial, I mean. It's kind of game over at that point. I mean, who's going to fuck with you at that point? I mean, my God. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so my that's kind of the direction I'm headed. I'm, I'm kind of I'm looking for that, like, 
full, utter, unquestionable enforcement. And I'm looking to understand that whole world in order to get that full, utter, unquestionable uh, enforcement without question every single time. And uh, and then, then things are going to get fun because then at that point, all we're going to do is, is I'm just going to start litigating. My whole, my whole due process is going to be litigation. I'm going to litigate. Like, you sneeze at me, I'm, I'm boom, we're, we're in it, bro. We're in litigation. And then I'm going to go through due process <laughs> as part of the litigation. So it's going to be like, oh, I'm going to open litigation with the first letter of due process. And then I'm going to do the second letter of due process through that same court case number. And then I'm going to do the third default judgment notice in the fucking court case. So I'm going to do the whole thing inside the public court case. Nice. Uh, that's pretty dope. So that's, that's the, the future that I plan on putting together for myself and learning how to do that and learning how to do appeals and learning how to do all the good stuff. So It won't happen overnight, but it's, ha- it's going to happen. I'll tell you that, you know. And that, but I still want to learn all the UCC stuff, you know, at some point, too. I know that's a lot, a lot, a lot of people, people do and stuff like that. So. That stuff really um, works, man. I'm telling you, we've, I've been using that with people with uh, a lot of success. It's been making a lot of difference for people. But you got to know how to use it. Like, if you just kind of put things on there and then don't enforce it, nothing's going to happen. You have to know how to enforce it. But Just put $50 trillion for looking at me on there? <laughs> 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 so, um, I'll tell you what. I gotta, I gotta take a minute. I gotta take a minute break, but I want to show you how to do this copyright, so your guys, all your uh, viewers, can uh, learn how to do copyright their names. I think it's like about eighteen dollars or something like that. So if you got eighteen dollars to spare, you can copyright your name, Ooh, get a certificate. Geez, that's <sighs> it's a little steep. It's a lot, Joe. I know you just paid for a trademark. I don't know. Eighteen dollars. What do you think I am? Made, made of promises, bro. What do you think I am? Just say I promise eighteen times. What do you think? You think promises grow on trees, Joseph? <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's hit, we're almost hitting the two two hour mark. Anyways, we'll we'll stop it here. We'll do a oh. we'll do a we'll do a section two, and we'll go for I don't know, not not crazy long. We're not going to go. We always say that, and we go for 15 hours. But I know. I'd say we, I'd say we'll go another, you know, kind of short amount. We'll come back. We'll split this up into two videos. And I don't I don't like to edit shit because I'm lazy. So this will be video one, and then we'll do a, a video two. Just to, it'll be it'll be a special uh, lusty is back special. You know what I mean? There we go. All right, so I'll end up, I'll end it off now.